Hey there, Eastside. Um, welcome to our service. It is so great to have to be able to connect with you guys, guys online, and it's great for us to know that God hears us wherever we are. So, been praying for you guys this last week that you would experience God right where you are. Um, we're about to go into a time of worship, and one of the things that I've wondered in my heart is whether whether you guys are. I feel the freedom to worship where you are. And I want to ask you this morning as we go into this time of worship that you would actually let go of your inhibitions, whatever that means for you, wherever you are right now, and that you just pause for a moment, silence your heart, and ask the Holy Spirit to unlock worship for you again. We can't gather together to worship, which is, a, which is really sad, but let's press into worship. Why don't you press into worship. And um, these times that we're in, we need to do two things. We need to be able to experience God, and God says we can. And we need to be able to hear God's reassuring voice. And God says we can, and this morning is all about that. So let me pray, and then we're going to go into our time of worship. God, we pray, I pray this morning, that you would release worship in our hearts that you would unleash worship in our children, in our marriages, for us as couples. And as the team leads us now, Holy Spirit, that you would touch everyone where they are. Help us to help us in these complicated times to be able to worship you and to hear your voice. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace like a river wash over me Immerse me in water as deep as the sea Hide me in love, a healing embrace Peace like a river Wash over me To worship your majesty I worship your holy name Jesus my everything All that I am is yours Spirit rain down on me. 
this land You've done it before But you do it Lord, send revival Lord, send it now A move of your spirit Heaven break out Come now in power Cover this land You've done it before Would you do it again? Lord, send revival Lord, send it now A move of your spirit Heaven break out Come now in power Cover this land Done it before Would you do Lord, it again? Lord, send revival Lord, send it now Move your spirit Heaven break out Come now in power Come with a sled like you've done it before, would you do it again?
Faith Church, um, I love that song. One of my favorite Bible passages is um, one of the Psalms that says this, God will bless to a thousand generations those whose hearts are stayed on us. And so when we sing the blessing like that, I, I think of my daughters and their husbands being blessed, little Elizabeth being blessed. And if God gives us grandchildren, more grandchildren in the future, that they will be blessed and their children will be blessed. Um, so what we've just sung is a prayer echoing the heart of God, which we read in the Word. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to come to another aspect of our worship right now. It is to give our tithe and our offerings to the Lord. Um, in the Bible, there's this beautiful passage in 2 Corinthians where Paul writes to the Corinthians. He says, you guys have more, and there's a church in Jerusalem that's really struggling. And there was this other church who gave way beyond what they could. Um, won't you guys <clears throat> take up an offering and so that you could be a blessing to the people in your community and so that you could be a blessing to the church in Jerusalem? And so when we think about giving here at Eastside, we think about... The assignment that God has given us, our assignment isn't just for us to be able to give you a message and some worship online. It is for us to be a, a river of life into our community and to be an incredible blessing to other churches. So when I think about the Corinthian church, it is just like Eastside. And I want you to think about that. Our country has just been through some incredible challenges because last week we were able to give a church in Natal a chunk of money just so that they could minister to people who don't have. Um, and so I want to ask you to be generous this, this day. I want to ask you to open your hearts and say, God, how much do you want me to contribute towards the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that our church can be a blessing? not just to ourselves and our community of faith, but to everyone. So let me pray. And, but while I'm praying, won't you just really make this moment of giving a time of intentional worship? So let's pray together. God, as people all around the city and across the country even, and maybe some even from other countries, consider now giving back into into our, our local church so that we could be a blessing not just to ourselves but to other churches. I pray that you stir our hearts, that you make us generous so that we could be an incredible blessing and enable not just people in our own church but people in other churches, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So why don't you make a giving, watch this video. It'll tell you just how to give. We have made it as easy as possible for you to give to the Ministry of Eastside. To use SnapScan, use your phone camera to scan the code at the bottom of the screen and you will be directed to the Eastside SnapScan account on your app. Or head over to myecc.co.za and click on the SnapScan link. If you prefer to give via EFT, you can find our banking details at myecc.co.za. Thank you for partnering with us in ministry. Are you visiting? Do you have a question or comment? Would you like to share a prayer request? The Connect card is the best way to connect with us. Let us know you're visiting, find out about opportunities to get involved, respond to any announcement you hear today. Whatever's on your mind, share it with us via the Connect card at myecc.co.za. We'd like to invite you to join us as we read a Bible reading plan on the YouVersion app together. So to find this week's reading plan, go to myecc.co.za and click join. Hey Eastsiders, did you know that International Literacy Day is coming up in September? In honor of that, and with the hope to promote literacy and language development, Abbas Pride is launching a book flood campaign in August. Please join us in donating children's storybooks for ages 3 to 12 in English or Setswana. We will have a collection box available at Eastside. Our goal is to collect hundreds of books to give to our partnering churches. More details to come. Are you wanting to grow in your marriage? Are you looking for a way to connect with your spouse? Maybe you've hit a difficult patch in the journey of marriage. Or maybe you've just got married and can't wait to tackle life together. Whatever your situation you may find yourself in, 
you have to agree that investing in your marriage can only be a good thing. That's why we are excited to be running a marriage course again this year. This course consists of seven weeks whereby you and your spouse will be able to connect with each other one-on-one -on -one and work through the course together through weekly videos and notes. No group discussions needed, just the two of you. Married, remarried, young or old, this course is for you. Register now via myecc.co.za. Here at Eastside, we know that as parents, you are wanting to see your child grow and flourish in their relationship with God. And we want to help you do that. So we have created two groups, one group for parents of toddlers and children, and another group for parents of tweens and teens. These groups are going to be used to communicate with you as parents, to share information with you about series that we are doing as ministries, as well as events that are coming up that will help your child flourish. We're also going to be sharing information with you about how you can apply the series that we're doing with your children during the week, as well as parenting tips on how to raise your child in the season of life that they're in. To join these groups, simply scan the QR code that is on the screen or go to our website, eastside.org.za. Here at Eastside. Well, church, we have had um, another interesting week in the life of, of our country. And even saying that just seems a little bit ridiculous because every week there just seems to be something else that's new, something else that we're like, surely not. Well, I had a moment this week when I read the news report about our Minister of Intelligence, or whatever the title is, saying that a report was given to the Minister of Police and then the Minister of Police said no report like that was ever given. Um, hearing our president say there was an insurrection and hearing someone else in parliament and our government saying no, it wasn't. And I just thought like how much worse could it get in terms of communication in our country? And then I realized, I had a moment and I was like, hang on, Mark. It's actually not so unfathomable. And I thought to these moments, and maybe you've had them, where you get home from work and your wife, husband, has set the table and there's flowers and it just looks really nice. And you say, well, what's the occasion? And she says to you, well, so-and-so are coming around for dinner. And you say, I didn't know they're coming around for dinner. And as you say it, you're like, oh, here we go. And then you hear about, I told you about this and you never listened to me. And that's when husbands, that's when we realize, like, okay, we've got to, we've got to score some points now. Or maybe... There are those moments where you're sitting at the table and you're doing some work and your child comes up right up in your face and like, Dad! And you're like, hey, why are you being so rude? And then your wife shouts from the kitchen, he's been calling you for 10 minutes and you just didn't hear it. Or maybe there are those moments where you're driving and you're following the GPS and you get lost or you're meant to be following the GPS and you get lost and your wife says, why didn't you just listen? The GPS told you 10 minutes ago to take a left and you just kept going. And so as I was thinking about this, as I was thinking about what's going on um, in our country, as I was thinking about what this means for us as Christians, I started thinking about the fact that we do have a problem of selective hearing. Now, I know that in my illustrations and my examples, I'm picking a little bit um, on the men, but if we're honest, it's not just the guys. Ladies, this is a safe space. You have your moments as well. You have your moments of selective, selective hearing. And here is my question that I want us to really think about as we kind of navigate the season, as we speak about what I want to bring to us this morning. If we can't hear our spouse tell us about a dinner date that we have, if we can't listen to the GPS, if we don't, have our, if we don't hear our kids um, calling us when we are sitting at the dinner table um, with our laptops or sitting on the couch with our phones, how can we expect to hear um, the voice of God in the season? Now, here is what I believe to be really, really true right now. Really, really important for us as a Christ follower. The world has become so complicated. The world has become a place with so much um, confusion and so much drama and so much stuff that we have to try to figure out. Uh, this week, Tuesday, 
as a church, we were hosting a webinar for our Baptist Union. We're discussing some of the things that we believe as, as a Baptist family because, because the world has become complicated, because there are things that we don't really know how to answer the questions. We don't know how to speak into those things. And I know that for us to effectively um, keep our heads above water, for us to effectively just thrive and survive and minister, particularly in a context of the world that we're living in. Fathers, for you to effectively parent your children. Mothers, for you to effectively parent your children. Husbands and wives, to navigate marriage as a couple, single people, to figure out how to um, be a healthy single person in society. The only way we're going to be able to do that is if we hear the voice of God. And I want to ask you, what would it look like if you go into your environments this week and you have heard the voice of God? What would it look like if um, moms, if you sat down at the dinner table and as you're about to lead your family in grace, you're not just going to pray a quick, um, what we're about to receive grace, but you know, you've heard the voice of God. And so God has got a word for your family at the dinner table. Let me ask you, and, and I'm just going to think of some people, Shaul, what would it look like for you to walk into your boardroom or your Zoom room and invest tech, and you've heard from the Lord. And so you lead your staff meeting out of a place of hearing God's desire for you and for your team. Rick, what would it look like on Wednesday evening when you go onto Zoom and those three couples that you're leading through a marriage preparation course, what would it look like for you and Pam to lead that marriage preparation course if you ever heard the voice of the Lord. What would it look like for us pastors? Let me challenge us. If we enter into every single meeting this week, if we go into every single conversation and we have heard the voice of the Lord. Children, hey, Seth, I know you're watching because I'm making you watch. God speaks to your spirit. I believe that already. God is an anointing for your life. I believe that. Your mom and I have spoken that over you. What would it look like if you go into your classroom this week, you start school again tomorrow, and you've heard what God's desire is for you and for your friends? And I can keep going. And this is the type of point that normally I would, I would just brush over, but I'm intentionally sticking here because I want you, Eastsiders, visitors, I want you to really wrestle with that question. What would it look like if you hear the voice of, of the Lord before you go into whatever it is you do this week. So that's what we're going to speak about. I want to speak about uh, hearing the voice of God, how to discern the voice of God, some practical things we can do. And so we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'm going to invite you to go there uh, with me. As always, the scripture is going to be on the screen, but you can also open it up on your Bible app. I want to encourage you to do that because the reason you would want to do that is you can highlight some things that stick out. You can make some notes. Even if you're watching on church online, there is a part of, um, there is a tab there with the Bible and you can follow along. And if you logged in uh, to your Bible app, you can make some notes and it's just a really helpful tool. But let's get into 1 Samuel chapter 3. This is what it says from verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. And in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. But one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak, that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down, and again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Other versions would tell you Samuel did not yet know the voice of the Lord. And so the word had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. 
And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli his vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord is with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all, is, all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. And the con- Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through the word. Let us pray together. Father, I pray that in this moment, as people are gathered to hear your word, that you would give us a focus that goes um, even beyond our natural ability to focus, Lord, that you would give us an ability to hear you, that you would give us an ability to know what it is that you want for us as your people to do. God, I ask that you would speak in a voice that is discernible. God, I pray that the things that you would speak to us through your word today would give us an ability to understand our next steps. I ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. And so this passage gives us a great starting point into this journey of hearing the voice of the Lord. And I've heard many times, many people have said in life groups, in one-on-one conversations, how can I hear from the Lord? How do I know that it's God speaking? And so there are some principles in this passage that we're going to look at. And it starts with this one, that recognizing God's voice is a journey. So Seth is learning to play the piano, which I'm very happy about. I'm not teaching him because I love my child and I would like to maintain that good relationship. So what he's done is he's found a really good playlist on YouTube that with this guy that's giving online lessons, teaches him how to play. Now, so Seth watched the first lesson and played, by the end of the first lesson, played a little nursery rhyme. And Tam and I just looked at each other and we're like, what the heck? It was really, really good. Then he watched the second lesson and he played even more and we're like, what the heck? And then we listened to what we thought was the next lesson, but it was like him trying to learn how to play Savage Love, like the full song. We're like, Boy, Tam said, Seth, it doesn't work like that. And she explained how it works like maths and the one thing has to build on the other. And I just listened to this. But I stood back smiling a little bit. And Tam actually said to me, that's just like you. You want to go from step one to step two to step 78. Because we're in a rush and we want to get there. And I think so much of our Christian life is, is really like that. We, we want to rush to the next thing. But so much of of this life that we face as Christ's followers is not about getting from 1 to 3 to 78. Everything, so much, is a journey. Uh, Faith is a journey. Obedience is a journey. Dying to ourselves is a journey. And hearing the voice of God is a journey. So I'm going to say to you what I say to Seth. Don't give up because you can't play Beethoven's Symphony in D flat after two weeks. Don't give up because you can't hear the voice of God after two weeks or two months or two years or 20 years. There is a journey and each of us is on this journey and we are going at at a pace that is unique to ourselves. My journey looks so different to your journey. And so in Numbers 22, um, we we get to see one of these these pictures that confirms something to us. Uh, We get to see that God still speaks today. That is what's important. Not how fast the journey is for you, but that you are on a journey. And so what we realize is um, there are countless pictures in Scripture, in church history, personal testimonies that confirm 
that God speaks. And so Numbers 22, God speaks through a donkey to a pagan prophet. In Genesis chapter 41, God speaks to Pharaoh in a dream. In Daniel 5, God speaks through the writing of the wall um, to Belshazzar. In Acts 9, Jesus speaks to Saul on the Damascus road. But even more directive than these questions, than, than these scriptures that show us that God speaks, is this. In John 10, 27, Jesus says this. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them for they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them for they follow me. If you have given your life to Jesus, if you are a Christ follower, you have heard the voice because Jesus speaks to his sheep. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes you may not realize that it is the voice of God. And I think that's where these conversations come about where people say, well, how do I know it's me? How do I know if, if God is speaking? Well, in a world of sin and confusion, it is part of the journey to learn um, to dis discern when it is God and when it is not. So I want you to stop and think about a few moments where you were convicted of sin, where, where you just knew that what you were doing went against God's word and God's plan for you. I want you to think of a time where um, someone's name just randomly popped into your head and you called them and, and they were like, I'm just I'm so, so glad you called um, you won't believe what's going on in my life. Or think about some time where you might have been prompted to tell someone about Jesus. Those moments, those were moments where the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. Those were moments where you as God's sheep were hearing His voice. And so I want to answer this question because it's one that comes up a lot. How does God speak to people? When when someone speaks about, I heard the voice of the Lord, or God spoke to me, what are we actually saying? What are we actually communicating? And there are seven ways that God usually speaks to us. And I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. The first one is through Scripture. The Bible is God's primary way of speaking to us today. I've spoken uh, fairly recently, I think even this year, spoke, um, uh, preached a word about the rhema word. A rhema word is when you read a scripture and the Holy Spirit illuminates it because it is personal for you and the Holy Spirit is giving you that word, that verse, that scripture for that time, for that situation. Um, it's a rhema word. And so when God highlights something in scripture, it's one of the ways that he speaks to us. Another way is through his still small voice. In 1 Kings 19 verse 12, um, the Bible speaks about God speaking to Elijah through a gentle whisper of a still voice. And God's still small voice usually comes in, in the form um, of a thought or, or like a whisper in our minds. Another way is that God gives us an impression in our spirits. An impression is like, it's like a tug in your heart or it's a deep sense of knowing in your spirit something. It's like God has spoken directly to your soul. God also speaks through pictures. So sometimes God will bring a picture to, my, to your mind that is just his way of communicating something. We see that in the book of Jeremiah. If you want to go and have a look, read up about that. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11, we see that God gives to Jeremiah a picture. God also speaks uh, through visions. And so what we see in the scripture that we just read of Samuel is that uh, we, we, we read that Jesus was in the room and spoke to Samuel. But, but then we read the next morning, Samuel remembered the vision that Jesus had given him. So sometimes uh, Jesus speaks through a vision and that's almost like a, a video that's playing in your mind. And sometimes he also speaks through dreams. Now dreams are like visions, but they happen when you're asleep. What's really great about a dream that God gives you is that you wake up the next morning and you remember it with beautiful clarity because it's from the Spirit and not just your own mind. And then God sometimes speaks through a trance. Now, as Christians, Bible-believing, evangelical Christians, the word trance might freak you out. But in Acts chapter 10, that's what we see. Because a trance is like a vision where your mind is unaware of the surroundings. And so that, that's how God speaks to us. But what we need to understand as well is that as we go on this journey, um, God often puts people around us to help us discern the voice of God. It took Eli to instruct Samuel before he could recognize the voice of God. Samuel went to Eli three times and said, yes, why are you calling me? Yes, why are you calling me? And it took Eli having to say, no, no, hang on, boy. 
that that you are hearing, this that you are hearing, that is the voice of the, of, of the Lord. So when you hear that voice again, this is what you must do. You must say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so what happens for us is we go on this journey of trying to discern the voice of God. And God has put people around you, whether you know it or not, that is able to help you uh, discern the voice of God. And so I want you to think of some of those people. Maybe you're, maybe you're already in some kind of mentoring uh, relationship with them. But if not, I want you to think, who is someone in my life that I can go to and say, I, I want to hear more of the voice of the Lord. I want to hear God speak. What does that look like when God speaks? Now, if you find people who have journeyed with the Lord for a long time and they have learned to discern the voice of God, what they are probably going to teach you is they're going to teach you a few tests to know if it is the voice of the Lord that you are hearing. And the first test is Scripture. God will never, does never, uh, contradict His Word. So if what you think you are hearing, if you go to someone and you say, I think this is what God is saying, if what you say contradicts Scripture, it's not from the Lord. And so they're going to help you with that. The second thing that is a good test that they're going to journey with you through is, is it sort of covered in the fruit of the Spirit. Now, this is an interesting one that I've experienced a lot. I sense that, that what, I, well, what I realize is that God will often coat His Word with an expression of the fruit of the Spirit. You know, like those, those nuts that are covered in chocolate? It's almost like the nut is God's Word, and then He coats it in chocolate, which is the fruit of the Spirit. For example, if you need to make a decision, and so you go and you pray about this decision, and you bring the options before the Lord, um, what, what usually would happen is God will give you peace about that decision. Peace is the fruit of the Spirit. Or if you're praying into something and suddenly you have the sense of joy, you go, God is coating His Word um, with, with the fruit of the Spirit. Or um, am I experiencing just a deeper sense? I'm usually such an impatient person, but God has given me such a sense of patience, which is the fruit of the Spirit. Um, that is God speaking. And so the Bible, the fruit of the Spirit, which coats when God speaks, and then does it glorify Jesus? See, when God speaks, when the Holy Spirit speaks, they always glorify the Son. So does you hearing from God and does what you are hearing from God point to Jesus and affirm, affirm His Lordship and His nature? The next thing that is important that I think we get out of um, this encounter that, that Samuel has with the voice of God is we have to be willing to listen if we want to hear. Don't go on a journey of trying to hear God if you don't really want to hear God's word. Um, people often say, God doesn't, God doesn't speak to me. I never hear from God. And the question I always want to ask is, um, how much dust is on your Bible? When last have you opened scripture? What are your Bible app? You know, the Bible app is streaks. Like how much time in a row, how many days in a row have you been in the word of God? What are your streaks look like? You see, we can't be saying, I want to hear God's word. I want to hear God speak to me if we never open scripture. It is very unlikely that you're going to start discerning the voice of God in your everyday life if you don't have a regular habit of reading the Bible. You can't ask for revelation when God's primary way of revealing himself is sitting closed on a shelf in your house. And you can't ask for revelation of God if you're not living a life of prayer. If you don't know how to pray, let me say this to you. The best place to learn to pray is in a prayer meeting because you get to see um, how other people are praying and you get to learn from other people's prayer journeys. And I love when people who aren't comfortable praying yet or aren't comfortable praying out loud yet join a prayer meeting because I love to see that journey of someone come in two or three prayer meetings and they're just quiet. And then maybe the fourth prayer meeting, they'll pray a really short prayer. And then six months down the line, I think, man, that person, when they joined their first prayer meeting, was so quiet and shy, and now they're praying bold prayers before the Lord. And so if you haven't joined a prayer meeting because you don't know how to pray or because you're not comfortable praying, the best place to join, a pr the best thing for you to do is to join a prayer meeting. And so Tuesday night, 6 p.m., come and join us. And then you need to have a rhythm. So read the Bible. And be part of a, a prayer journey, but then also have a rhythm of taking time um, to hear God's word. And I want to give us a practical way of starting on this journey. So if you go to myecc.co.za, 
There is a PDF there that you are going to download, that you can download, and I want to encourage you to do that and to sit with that PDF um, and to go through a bit of a practical experiment, a practical journey. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a pen and paper out to write down anything that God might say. You're going to find a quiet place to be alone. And you're going to come with a simple childlike faith. This is not a time to analyze and overthink things. You're going to pray. And then you're going to read a verse of scripture. And in that PDF guide, there are some questions that you're going to ask the Lord. And you're going to trust and ask him to answer those questions. And so it's very practical. And I want to encourage you sometime in the next 24, 48 hours, be disciplined. Do this. Work through it. And, and if you're bold, um, and if, you, if you're willing to do this, why don't you give me some feedback? I'd love to hear from you. Just let me know. Send me an email. Or if you have my number, send me a WhatsApp message and say, I did it, and this is what happened. I'd love, um, I'd love to hear from you. But once we start hearing the Word of God, we've got to be willing to obey what we've heard. It was difficult for Samuel. You, you picked that up in, in the Scripture. That, I mean, he, the first time he hears God's voice, he's given a message to communicate that isn't easy. But he is obedient. And then we read that the Lord is with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. I have a sense that what God is calling us as Christ followers to um, in this time, this generation, this time in history, this time during COVID, this time during uh, the, the pandemic and, and the, everything that's going on politically in our country, um, all the questions that people have, um, all the moral and ethical dilemmas we're facing. I believe that what God is calling us to as people is to be um, people of integrity who speak truth even when it's difficult. People who are discerning about what is truth. To speak out against injustice. To speak against the lies that are all over society. We need to speak out against truths, uh, against difficulties with truth. Like, um, truth like marriage is between a natural man and a natural woman according to scripture. Difficult to speak out, but that's what the Word of God speaks. Um, life begins at conception, and every person is created in the image of God. God created male and female. God's design for the family is not negotiable. Um, again, every person is created in the image of God, whether Jew or Gentile, black or white, male or female. The Bible is the true Word of God revealed by the Holy Spirit. These are truths that are under attack and things that when we hear the voice of God, God calls us to speak truth into those situations. And so don't go on this journey if you're not willing to do what God wants you to do when He speaks to you. And so I tell you this because God calls us to speak with boldness. I don't see this as a warning. I'm not giving you a warning now. What I'm doing is I'm giving you something exciting. I'm saying to you that when you start hearing the voice of God, God is going to give you words to speak. He is going to put a word in your spirit. He is going to give you truth. He is going to give you a revelation of himself. He is going to give you a, a boldness and a, a discerning and a mature way of communicating that truth in a way that points people to the truth of Jesus Christ, to the truth of his word, and is going to help people come to repentance because when you spend time in the presence of God, when you discern the word of God, when God speaks to you and God speaks through you, what happens is that people's lives are transformed and people's lives are changed. And so I want to speak that over you boldly right now. Take that prophetically. It's exciting. We, God is calling us to be part of the, of the solution in a very problematic society. And so um, I guess the question that you might be asking is, what do I do now? And I want to say this. Remember the conversation started with Samuel. In Scripture, Samuel is counted among the greatest of the judges, like Moses. He's also numbered uh, among the prophets, but he wasn't a warrior like Moses. Samuel wasn't a warrior. He was a hero, though, who rallied the spirit of his people in the midst of oppression, keeping alive their hope and their faith. And so I have a strong sense that in our season right now, God is raising up Samuels. Who will rally the spirit of God's people in the midst of oppression to keep their hope and their faith alive. The journey started with Samuel lying on his bed, saying, Speak, Lord, for I'm listening. And I wonder if you're willing to listen. Are you? Are you willing to listen? In the next 24 hours, find a quiet place, open a notebook, take that PDF, say, Speak, Lord. For I'm listening. And church, let's trust that what God speaks to us as a church would be the most amazing message of hope and of unity 
and of the providence of God and the word of God and the truth of God spoken to you. And I want to challenge you and I want to, I, want to, I want to invite you into this conversation. If God brings a word to you, if God speaks to you, if God gives you a scripture, would you let us have it? Would you contact one of the pastors and just say, I just, I believe that God is saying this. Would you come into a prayer meeting and just say, God has given me this scripture. It's how we go on this journey together of saying as a ch- the church of Jesus Christ, Eastside Community Church, we are saying, speak God for listening. And so let me pray for us as a church. Jesus, I believe with every fiber of my being that you still speak. I see that in scripture. I see that in society. I see that in my own life. And so I want to pray for every one of us. Those who call Esat home, those who might be visiting from another church, those who might be visiting for the first time, just trying to suss us out. God, I pray that what you would do over the next 24, 48, 36, 48 hours, the next weeks, the next months, is that you would speak. God, I pray that when we go into meetings, when we go into society, when we get together with our friends, when we make decisions, we will be able to do it with boldness because we have heard the voice of the Lord. I ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Would you bless us with your word? Would you bless us with your voice? Amen. Well, wasn't that a powerful word from the Lord? Um, Mark has already said that he's going to be putting the notes up on our website so why don't you go to our website download it take time over it this coming week and i really believe we're in a time where god wants to reveal himself and we want to put practical tools in your hands so that you can be able to hear god and enjoy god and be the person that god wants wants you to be so thank you for worshiping with us go to our website download this and keep speaking about it in your family to your friends and the Lord bless you in this week. We trust God to make your lives like, like rivers of living water into your family, into your friends, into our country. These days we need people like you to be those kind of people. Lord bless you. Good morning, Eastside Explorers. This month we have been speaking about outer space and speaking about our spiritual gifts and we've been speaking a lot about astronauts and outer space and did you know that astronauts have to eat special food when they are out in space with special plates and bowls and things who knew and if astronauts try to eat dinner or breakfast or lunch just like us all their food would fly all around in the spaceship and they would never be able to eat it So they have to have special food. But today, I want to tell you about people who weren't astronauts so they could eat supper just like you and I. One night, Jesus and his special friends, who we call the disciples, got together for a special holiday dinner. The holiday that Jesus and his disciples were celebrating was called Passover. Since it was an extra special meal, Jesus wanted an extra special way to show his friends that he cared about them. So he decided when his friends got there that he was going to wash his friends' feet. Wait! Their feet? Ew, that's gross. Washing your feet before dinner might sound weird, but when Jesus was on earth, everyone walked everywhere just wearing sandals. Or sometimes they were even barefoot. And I'm sure you can imagine, their feet would get really dirty. Because Jesus loved his disciples so much, he wanted to serve them. So when his friends came for dinner that night, Jesus washed his friends dirty, stinky, yucky feet. And when some of his friends tried to stop him, he wouldn't let them. Instead, he said, now that I have washed your feet, you must go and do the same for others. Now, Jesus didn't mean that we have to wash each other's feet before dinner. But do you know what he did mean? Jesus wanted us to help, love, and take care of each other. He washed his disciples' feet to remind us that we can serve others. So kids, why don't you serve one of your friends or one of your family members who you love so much to show them that Jesus loves them too. Let's pray and ask God to help us to serve and see people's needs. Father, we thank you that you first served us. Jesus, you showed us how to serve others 
by washing the disciples' feet. And we pray that you will help us to serve others and see people who may need our help. We pray that we would help those who need to see you more. We pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, kids, I'll see you next week. I hope you have a great week. Bye. God loves us and he gave his only son. He is awesome.